Well, the story on the ice tonight found the Blackhawks in the land of Disney with a matinee affair against the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Wednesday night's 3-2 loss at San Jose left Hawks coach Craig Hartsburg in no mood to Mickey Mouse around. He called a Thanksgiving Day practice to prove it. But did it work? We head to the pond, take a look at this one, pick it up in period number one. Here come the Hawks, Tony Amani to Sergei Kriba crash off, it goes wide of the net, but Gia Bear goes down with a pad save. That's one of 27 saves. He stops Kriba crash off. Now follow the bouncing puck. Chelios tries to take control, but Timo Solani picks his pocket. You don't see that often. Finds Paul Correa, snaps the wrist or past Jeff Hackett, one nothing. The Ducks were quacking. Tough day for Gary Suter. Ted Drury says hello. Gary says my head hurts. Second period. Ducks applying the pressure. Yari Curry to Kim Baumgartner. He has Hackett down and out, but here comes Cam Russell. He clears the crease. But Hackett pays back Drury right there and gets the penalty. Ducks capitalize. Korea's wrister almost decapitates Jeff Hackett right there. Over his head, finds the net. Brian Bellows gets credit for the goal. 2-0 Ducks. Here come the Ducks again. Korea centers to Bellows. Bellows delivers the one-timer. This one, though, gloved by Hackett. Saved 23 of 25 shots. But the Blackhawks struggle. Enrique Ciccone gives it up. Hackett bails him out right here, but there's no bailing out the Blackhawks this afternoon. Final number is not impressive. 2-0, Anaheim wins it. The Blackhawks are now 1-3-1 on the trip. It's the 15th time in 26 games this year the Blackhawks have scored two goals or less. And the Hawks are glad they don't face Anaheim again until March 28th. Call it double vision or a mirror image, but look at the last two matchups between these two teams and how similar the results have been for the Ducks. Two goals in each game, none allowed in each game, shots almost identical, penalty minutes, but look at the shutout streak. Blackhawks have not scored against the Ducks in 166 minutes and 36 seconds. Next up for the Blackhawks, we'll wrap up that six-game road trek. Saturday, they take on the LA Kings. Pre-game at 9 o'clock right here on Sports Channel. They drop the puck at 9.30. Over to the Bears side of things now, where nobody needs reminded of what week this is or who quarterbacks the opposition. Brett Favre has fired 12 touchdown passes in the Packers' last three meetings with the Bears. The Bears have tried different game plans, and none have worked. But now the Bears have a fresh idea. In today's Bears Nightly, Eric Collins reports that the injured Bears secondary could try the begging for mercy tactic. If Brett Favre finds himself looking for the Bears' Achilles heel this week, he may just locate it in Mark Carrier's left ankle. Carrier's sprained ankle will definitely keep him out of the starting lineup against Green Bay, and it may end his streak of 108 straight games played. That's what's tough about this, and of all, you know, and particularly this game, you know, the, the, our most important game of the year. So that's, that's, but, you know, you know, we'll see. He's better today. We're not rolling him out from play. Third year man Anthony Marshall will assume Carrier's free safety spot. Last week in three quarters of work against Detroit, he logged six tackles and broke up three passes. It don't make no difference at all. You know, most of the guys out here, we've been together ever since July. And we've been we're in jail together. And we know the responsibility that we have to have on ourselves and as a team, too. Marshall's really looking at this as an opportunity. And, uh, and there's nobody on our defense is concerned if, if, if Marshall starts the game and Mark doesn't. Uh, you know, they, we've got a lot of confidence that Marshall will do the job. It's safe to say that Bears coaches were pulling their hair out in clumps early this week when the other starting safety, Marty Carter, came down with the flu. But the good news is, Carter practiced today, and he's expected to play on Sunday. Carter's one of the many Bears who've been battling the flu this week. He's still under the weather, but he practiced today. Also in uniform was Walt Harris. Harris has been experiencing agony of defeat. A nagging turf toe problem kept him on the sidelines against the Lions. I'll be ready to go. Um, I had a good practice this week. Things working out where my feet feeling better, so I think I'll be ready to go Sunday. Needless to say, the Bears will need to have as many hands as possible on deck this Sunday. A loss in Green Bay, and the Bears' playoff hopes will be sent packing. At Alice Hall, I'm Eric Collins for Bears Nightly. Now here's that Bears' last line of defense. Carrier, Harris, Carter, Wolford combined the numbers this year, 13 interceptions. Carter and Wolford have combined for eight of those. They have forced five fumbles, recovered three of those, three sacks, the tackles per game averages out to 36.3. That secondary definitely will be tested on Sunday against Brett Favre. Speaking of Sunday, Sports Channel is the place to be Sunday night. No show tomorrow night because of the Blackhawks. Sunday, though, will give you features, interviews, and analysis. It's this Sunday night for Bears Nightly on a special hour-long report. 
Get all the analysis and insight from Michael Timpson and Doug Buffone following Sunday's game with the Pack. Now, from the NFL, we head to the high school ranks where the road has led to normal and state championship weekend. Four champs crowned today, two more tomorrow. Today's headliner featured 4A Providence gunning for a three-peat and their 42nd consecutive win as they faced Metamora. Let's take a look at this one. Talk about starting things early. How about the first play of the game? Providence with the ball. It pops loose. Dave Pop recovers it. Out of the pack he comes. 65 yards later, he is in for the score. Providence would go up 14 to nothing despite three first-half turnovers. Watch the replay here. See if he might not have been down. You make the call at home. The one that counted resulted in a touchdown. Middlemore comes back. This is Allen with a 48-yard run. Bust through the hole, and no one will bring him down. Redbirds bounce all the way back and tied at 14 at halftime. Second half. It's that man again. It's Allen, this time with a heck of a kick. Watch the throw and watch the receiving end. Allen goes up, grabs the catch. It is good despite the flag. Metamora thinking upset, led 21-14, but Providence would get within one, then put it away for good. The 10-yard run by Robert Cruz, and Providence celebrates again. What a way to go out for the senior class for the Celtics. Providence outscores its opponents in the postseason 210 to 48. Their third straight title. Congratulations, 28 to 21. The final score. How about 3A? Cartersville versus Spring Valley Hall. And I hate when this happens. Don't you, Steve? Norm? Yeah, what do you do in that situation? Cartersville strikes back. Billy Pinkston carries the mail from five yards out. He carried it for 1,400 yards going into this game. And they built a 14 to nothing lead. But Spring Valley Hall didn't get here by quitting and they rebound. Josh Turigliotti, two touchdowns of the night. This one evens the score at 14 apiece. They then take the lead. Eric Yearley with the sweep. Little hop, skip, and a jump into the end zone. 20 to 14. Red Devils had the lead. It was raining. But the Lions wouldn't be stopped by rain, sleet, snow, or anything else. Kenny Richards singing in the rain. Cartersville wins the 3A crown. 23 to 20, the final score. Carterville finishes up 14 and 0. Spring Valley Hall finishes at 12 and 1. How about Class 2A? Moequa against Leroy. Moequa was up 6 nothing in this one, and then adding to it. Watch the misdirection, and then the blocking. Drew Moore says, "Thank you very much. I'll go in for the score." They add the two-pointer. Raiders led 14 zip. Fourth quarter, Leroy hops on the comeback trail. Jake Roop, second effort, cuts it to 14 to 8. Key play of the game. Less than five minutes to go. West Temple should have kept, but he gives it up on the option, and he coughs it up. Jake Qualls recovers, and Leroy was smelling title. They capitalize. Mike Pfeiffer up. Mike Pfeiffer over. We are even at 14 apiece. They pass up the point after. They go for two, and watch Roop. He will take the pitch. He will follow the blockers. No one going to touch him. The road to the end zone is clear, and so is the road to a state championship. Down 14 to nothing. Leroy wins the Class 2A title. 16-14, your final score. They wind up 14-0. Moequa caps a fine season at 12-2. On to Class A, Sciota versus Shinoa. Second quarter, Sciota down 13-7. The quick hitter, the huge hole, Tyler Walker, 23 yards for the score. He had two touchdowns in the afternoon, 14-13 Thunder. Fourth quarter, Shinoa trailing 28-27, 130 to go. Dan Butler rolls. Nathan Kylander climbs the ladder, and he brings down a state title. Shinoa wins the Class A title, 35-28. Sciota went into this game posting seven shutouts onto the season, but their season comes to an end, 35-28. We are not done yet. There is more to come tomorrow. Four state championships down, two more to be decided tomorrow at noon in 5A. It's Joliet Catholic versus Mount Carmel. And after in 6A, it's Wheaton South versus Lincoln Way. It's all right here tomorrow on Sports Channel. Meanwhile, Dunbar and Loyola waged war at Soldier Field this afternoon in the 63rd annual Prep Bowl. Dunbar was seeking its first ever city title while Loyola was attempting to defend its crown. Sports Channel's Mark Pinsky has the story. Dunbar's Rossell Harvey had rushed for over 2,600 yards this season, but the Ramblers' defense held Harvey to just 59 yards on 17 carries. Harvey had to leave the game on two separate occasions with injuries. I just let the team down a little bit because I got hurt, but I tried to play on it and uh, bring him back up. It raised our spirit up, but I couldn't do it. And I got hurt again. We watched a lot of film on these guys. We knew number 22 was the guy. And uh, if we took him down, then, you know, the rest of everything else would fall in place. Today's top running back was Loyola Academy's Ryan McNeely. 
He ran for over 100 yards and also scored the game's first touchdown for McNeely. Just a typical gutty effort. Smash mouth. You know, don't, don't try to juke anyone and just go straight ahead and see what happens. On the end zone. Yeah. It's nice. Well, a quarterback, Peter Lee, threw for just 36 yards in the first half. But after intermission, Lee, who was headed for Wisconsin, got the passing game cranked up. Lee completed two straight passes to wide receiver Chad Heslip. The two seniors hooked up for a 17-yard gain. And then Lee went back to his favorite target. Heslip scores the game's second touchdown on a 19-yard pass. The Ramblers took a commanding 14-0 lead. The play before, um, D-back was real aggressive, stepping up, trying to uh, pick off the out. So I told Coach Baum, and he's called out enough when we got him biting. It was wide open. I mean, didn't even really need to make a throw once we got the pump fake. Loyola's Tom Hutch gave the Ramblers a 21-0 lead. They win by 13 points. The Ramblers are now 7-0 in the prep bowl. This feels real nice because this could possibly be my last game of my career. So I just want to help my team out um, any way I could. And, help us with a victory. It was a great game. It was great, two great teams. Uh, and and uh, uh, we as coaches just make sure we don't screw it up too much. And they didn't. The Ramblers have won back-to-back -back prep bowls, beating Dunbar today 21-8. to From Soldier Field in Chicago, I'm Mark Pinsky for the Sports Channel Reports. We are not done yet. In college football, the spotlight shined on Lincoln, Nebraska, where the Cornhuskers butted head with, with the Colorado Buffaloes. Not much on the line here, just a trip to the Big 12 championship game, an invite to the Sugar Bowl, and maybe, just maybe, a shot at the national title. Let's pick up this one. Buffalo's a 17-point underdog going in, but they led 7-0, but an awful day for Coy Detmer. This pass deflected, and this pass returned for a touchdown. Jay Foreman does the honors. Nebraska up 7-6. Second quarter, Nebraska freshman running back D'Angelo Evans slices and dices seven of his 123 yards, and the Husker heads were happy. 17 to six, they had the lead. Fourth quarter, 17 to nine. Detmer up top, and watch the catch. Not the interception, but the catch. That's Phil Savoy who takes it away. They settled for a field goal, cut it to five. Less than three minutes to go. Detmer, who was running for his life all afternoon, tries to cap a comeback but it falls incomplete. He goes just 12 of 38 on the afternoon. Nebraska hangs on in Lincoln. The Huskers beat the Buffaloes for the fifth consecutive time. They have won 36 straight at home, 31 in a row in the conference. And next up, they will play Texas in the inaugural Big 12 title game. Then their next stop could very well be a Sugar Bowl date with the winner of Florida State and Florida. Still to come, Norm and Steve return to take you through the rest of the night in the NBA. And the general leads his Indiana Hoosiers against the Duke Blue Devils in the finals of the NIT. But first, here's the rest of the night in college football. It's Mazda. Jump on value. Great.